All right, guys, in today's uh, Cinemill BTS, we're back in my living room doing another shoot, this time for the gimbal dock. As usual, we got B cam GH5S, and we got A cam, which is the EVA, and our Sigma PLs. And so for the key light, we have an Aperture 300D. Here you see uh, I got our Cinemill Aperture knob at work, and uh, we got the Light Dome 2. I'm using the more heavier of the two diffusions inside the light grid. What's different today is we're shooting a video about the gimbal dock. What I wanted to do is I wanted to throw some light just on the gimbal dock. So I got here my Honeycrate's Honeybee. It's a light grid meant for uh, this Quasar tube and it's just throwing some, some top light down on the products and on me. And then I'm using here the Cinemill nail, magnetic nail-on plate as a stand. I just threaded it into the bottom of the Quasar light. And if I wanted to, I could use a screw gun and screw it down into the Apple box so that it wouldn't fall over at all and make it way safe. We got our backlight, which is the Aperture LS Mini 20. I have a full CTO on that just to mix the color temperatures a little bit with my with my backlight. Right here, we, we have an insert shot of the gimbal dock accessories. This is the tool holder. And so that's what the B camera is getting. And so it is actually seeing a little bit of this background. And so to sort of give it some color, I threw an Aperture NC, just throwing some light and which kind of separates and makes the background kind of look interesting. One of the things I wanted to talk about today, I use a light meter. I know a lot of people out there uh, think you don't need, there's no use for a light meter anymore. Uh, I still think it's incredibly useful and actually vital if you want to actually know what you're doing. But more importantly, if you want to start working before cameras are on set. The best way you can do this is of course with a light meter because you don't need a camera to start lighting. The other thing it does is it can accurately show you problems that you need to address and have uh, people help you fix. In today's scene, it's really simple. I start the video close to the table right here and then I walk over here. And you might think, oh, there's, that's not a really big deal. But if by using my meter, I can see, you can extend and retract the lumosphere. So I can rotate it and I can take a reading and you can see here it says five, six. If now I go about a foot away, foot and a half away, and uh, I take another reading, it reads a four. That's basically the inverse square law at work. You know, for every foot of distance, you lose a quarter of the light. That's a problem because here I have correct exposure uh, and then back here, I'm gonna be slightly underexposed. And so if I want to give the actors or the talent more freedom to move around on set without losing, you know, trying to maintain a consistent exposure or skin tone, the only way to do that, of course, is by moving the light source, in this case, my key light, farther away from where I'm, more the zone that I'm trying to light. I'm gonna slide this light back a little bit. Now I'm gonna leave it at 65% just to demonstrate what happens. Without changing the light levels, but just moving the light back, uh, my guess is that I'm gonna lose about a stop. So if I point my light right here, my meter, there you go, I got a four where I used to have a 5.6. So to compensate for this, luckily I'm using an Aperture 300D at 65%. So I have a lot more room to go. So let me bump that up to 100%. There you go, I have a 5.6 and where I used to have a four. And so as you can see here, I also have a 5.6 over here. The reason is the farther away you get from the light source, the less drop in light that you're gonna have. In the first few feet you are away from the light source, it's gonna have a very dramatic drop. Like we had before when the light was three feet closer to the talent, when I moved from here to here, I had a full stop loss. And now that I increased the distance of the light to me, I can move from here to here and have the same five, six uh, light reading. Things you can accurately tell what's going on if you're using your light meter that there's no way you're, you're gonna know, obviously with the naked eye. You know, it's good to point out uh, is I'm using an Aperture 300D today. You know, I have a certain budget to work with. For the money, it may just made sense to get the 300 because of the extra output it has. 
Now, a lot of the times I'm not, I'm using it at 50% or 20% even um, because it's very powerful. But so a lot of people are like, well, it's, you know, it's overkill or, you know, I'll just, most of the time I'm gonna be using uh, the 120D is gonna do the job just fine. But this is a great example. I don't have the light very far away from me. It's maybe eight, eight feet away, maybe. I'm using the, the heavier of the two diffusions on the light dome and I wanna continue to use that same diffusion. Because remember, the light source, when you move it farther away, it gets smaller. So I can move the light farther away, turn up the power so I get the same uh, stop I had before, and continue to use the heavier diffusion. But it's a good, also a good example why on bigger film sets like uh, that you might see very big light sources, 10 by 10s, 20 bys, uh, farther away from talent and um, you need a lot of, you know, you need good diffusion on there, book light or something, um, and that sort of thing. I wanted to talk a little bit about how I use the light meter um, and how I use my 300D, and that's pretty much it. So I hope you had a little takeaway from this. Let me know if you, I should be continue doing these or not, and if you're liking them. All right, I'll see you in the next one.